Dr. Scott Gottlieb is uh, here with us again this morning. He serves on the boards of Pfizer and Illumina. He's also a former FDA commissioner, a CNBC contributor. Uh, Scott, just a little, not off topic, but as an FDA, former FDA commissioner, if we got something quickly in, in the test tube, is there such a thing as, as fast track approval for either, either a therapeutic or a vaccine? Yeah, absolutely. And I think this can go briskly. I think you need a three-pronged strategy here. First, you're going to look at antivirals that are on the shelf right now that have been developed maybe for other purposes. See if you can repurpose it for this virus. Second, then that might be available soon. You could potentially have something as quickly as the fall for things that are being tested right now, like remdesivir, Gilead's drug. Second, we need an antibody-based approach that we can use for prophylaxis. That's like what Regeneron is developing. That's also near term, potentially could be available for the fall. And then third, a vaccine strategy. That's probably a year or two away. The fall's not working for me. I meant fast track. Yeah. I, no, nothing, so even existing drugs, you couldn't find, I mean, there, well, doctors it, prescribe things off-label all the time. Yeah, there's some already. stuff on the shelf that has shown activity in vitro. The, the one that's being tested the widest right now is remdesivir. I think of that trial in China, if we turn over the card in that trial, and we're going to do that in April, and that shows activity against this virus, I think you're likely to see that rolled out in a wider um, sort of actual use study where you actually give it to patients you'd who are... You'd still need to do that, though, at that point, and you'd still, you'd still be collecting. Fall. You'd still be collecting data, but you'd, be, you'd probably be doing it in the context of some kind of treatment protocol where you're okay. de delivering treatment very widely if that drug shows, shows that it's effective in those early trials. All right. We're hearing that when, when you, you know, if you want to get nervous about things, we're hearing this may have been here a lot longer than, than we were aware, that a lot of people may have been walking around with it that we had no idea about. We need to do testing. Where are we on ramping up the ability for, uh, for providers to test? Well, what, what I believe is that once we bring the public health labs online this week and we're doing that, we should be able to have the capacity to test about 10,000 patients a day or 10,000 samples a day. Next week, we're going to start to bring the academic labs into the game, and that might be another 10,000. So I think within two or three weeks, you're going to be up to a testing capacity of around 20,000 patients a day, potentially. It's going a little bit slower. Um, there's about maybe 60 public health labs that should be online later this week. Hopefully, all 100 of them will be online, but, but maybe something Scott, a little that, short of that. That's a different story than the front of the New York Times today suggests. They, they've got a story that the Trump administration says they hope to test nearly a million people this week. Right. Well, I think what, what they were probably saying, and this was a commissioner out with a statement yesterday, I think what they were probably implying was that there might be enough test kits to, in order to run a million samples. But test kits are different than actual capacity to run a test. So a lab can have a thousand test kits on its shelf, but can only run a hundred test kits, a hundred tests a day, because that's the throughput of the lab. Um, in order to get to that number, a million test kits capacity, you probably need to bring on one of the commercial manufacturers. So it implies maybe that Kyogen is going to get approved this week. They applied, they said, Monday for an emergency use authorization of their test. So that does imply that one of the major manufacturers is probably going to get online if they think they're going to have a million test kit capacity. But that's very different than how many tests we can actually perform, and that's dependent upon what the labs can do and but how many labs are running. if we actually see this test kit get approved. That is good and, news, and come yes. online too. Hey, there was just a statement that Eli Lilly put out, and this, they say because of the concerns raised about the coronavirus and whether patients can count on a reliable supply of medicine, they're saying Lilly does not anticipate any shortages for any of their products, including all forms of insulin. That, that's good news. Because good that's news. part of what's been circulating is the idea that you won't be able to get your medications. Right, so the, the bigger companies have a big stockpile of ingredients for their drugs because of the, their continuity of operations um, reasons. These smaller companies, generic manufacturers, they might be a little bit more, um, you know, pressured by the shortages in China. Um, but the big companies, I think, should be okay. In so, terms of the, I'm, I was going to say, in terms of the broad range of response right now, there's this debate, maybe it's a real debate, maybe it's not, between should we be doing containment or mitigation? Practically speaking, is there a difference in terms of what public health officials will be doing one way or the other? Well, we'll probably pass containment. We so are. containment means you find the person who's sick, you find all the people they might have right. been in contact with, you isolate them, you test them. So you we're already them. doing mitigation. We know it's we're, we're already doing mitigation. There's too many cases Widers. now to contain it in the United States. You can do local containment to try to slow the spread, but really what you're focused now is to try to slow the spread. Um, hopefully buy yourself time to a therapeutic or getting into the summer. Um, or slow it enough that it eventually dies out, which is unlikely to happen. Has the response in being able to test enough people been slower here than in China or South Korea or Italy or Iran? Have we, should 
Would you look at that and say that our public health officials were less ready than these other places? Was it the CDC's fault with the reagent? Yeah, well, we're still not leaning forward as aggressively as we should in terms of testing. And we should be trying to do Who's very broad-based testing. Is it a, this is going to be a political football, and it already is, yeah. and we're seeing it. it was, was the CDC didn't have funding? Was the, uh, is, where would you as, as, assign the blame for, if we are behind? I think what we should have done from the outset, and I talked about in this show, is taking all of the above approach with respect to testing. Get the manufacturers in the game right from the outset, companies like Thermo Fisher, Kyogen, Cepheid. Um, get the academic labs in the game. Big academic labs can do this testing. And get the public health labs in the game. Instead, we just went with the public health labs, and when there was a hiccup, we didn't have a backup How about plan. closing the, you know, not allowing um, travelers to come in? I mean, Clearly how would bought you, us time. That, how would that, you grade the response? I, I think the effort to close the, the travel uh, from China was clearly the right decision. It was controversial at the time. It bought us a good amount of time. The question is, what did we do at that time? And we didn't use it as effectively as we could have. We did th some things right. We got the country prepared and the hospitals prepared. But the testing capacity could have been ramped up sooner. All and right. now, now we're catching up. And we are catching up.